हेलो गाइस, आई होप यू ऑल आर डूइंग गुड आई एम विशाली के कान एंड वी आर डिस्कसिंग द ऑप्टिकल कम्युनिकेशन। टुडे इन दिस वीडियो वी आर गोइंग टू टॉक अबाउट द डी डब्ल्यू डी एम विच इज ऑल्सो नोन एज डेंस वेवलेंथ डिवीजन मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग वी ऑल हैव स्टडीड अबाउट द डब्ल्यू डी एम इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो एंड नाउ आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू नाउ आर अवेयर अबाउट द डब्ल्यू डी एम वॉट इज वेवल डिवीजन मल्टीप्लेक्सिंग वी आर सेंडिंग द सिग्नल्स ओवर द डिफरेंट वेव लेंथ एंड द वेव लेंथ इज एक्टिंग another dimension like we have the space and time now here in the dense wdm d means dense what does this word dense means dense means a lot of things in a compact area so dense population means a lot of people are living in a small area similarly the dwdm means a lot of wavelength are there in the small band so here i will be using again the 15 50 nanometer band but i am going to send the signal over a lot of wavelengths right i can use 16 32 even 128 and even more wavelengths over the same band of 15 50 nanometer but when i was talking about the wdm i told you i have only two wavelengths over 15 50 band so we started with only 13 10 and 15 50 nanometer wavelength which was operating in 15 50 nanometer band now in the dwdm we have 16 32 64 1 28 or even more wavelengths in the 15 50 nanometer window so now here if i am sending a lot of signals over the different wavelengths so here in the dwdm i can send a lot of signals parallelly right here i will be having closer channels so the channels are closer right so the channels are closer and we are sending separate wavelength in each of the channel so each channel is having separate transmission of the separate signals and these channels are spaced very closely and this is the reason it is called the dwdm and now when i have used a lot of channels over the different signals now i can send a lot of signals i can send 16 signals simultaneously if i am using the 16 wavelength channel I can send 32 signals simultaneously if I am using the 32 wavelength signal band right if I am using 128 wavelength channel then I can send 128 different signals simultaneously so I can increase the number of transmitters and receivers that can be operated on a particular channel right so this is how we can increase the capacity so this is how we are increasing the channel capacity the data rate would also be high it may transmit 10 gb per second digital signal or sema analog signal as well so we can send both kind of signals right so the format of signal doesn't matter over here the bandwidth bandwidth of the modulator laser is around 10 to 50 megahertz right or i can call it as 0.001 nanometer right so we can see we have a higher bandwidth if i have higher bandwidth i will be having higher speed so with the help of dwdm i am going to get a higher speed communication so guard band is of 0.4 to 1.6 nanometer so these are the some mathematical parameters that you can remember the guard band 0.4 to 1.6 nanometer bandwidth which is 0.001 nanometer and it can send any signal of any format and it has higher channel capacity right so now we can form this architecture with a lot of type of components and these components now can be passive as well as active right so now here we have i already told you we have separate wavelength over the separate channel so we have discrete wavelength from the individual channels now these wavelengths i can even modulate them i can route them 
and even I can switch them individually. So these wavelengths can be processed individually as well. So as I told you, the architecture is made of active as well as passive components. So this is the structure of the architecture. We have the N input terminals where the N transmitters are placed. So T1, T2 up to Tn are the transmitters which are sending the signal over the different wavelength. So T1 is sending the signal over lambda 1, T2 is sending the signal over lambda 2 and Tn is sending the signal over lambda n. The MUX is going to combine all of the signals and here in the optical fiber it is sending the one combined signal which is having all of the wavelengths right. Then we have the optical add drop multiplexer which is going to drop some wavelengths which are undesirable and it is going to add some what desirable outside signals as well. So we have already talked about OADM then we have the EDFA. So erbium doped fiber amplifier is used to increase the range of the communication. Then we have the DMUX which is again going to split the signals into the various wavelengths. So here we will be having the N signals over the different Wavelength. So here we have lambda 1, lambda 2 up to lambda n which are going to the different receivers R1, R2 up to Rn. Right. So I hope you understood how we have the architecture of the DWDM. As I told you we are using the optical amplifiers over here. We are using the separate channels. So we have increased transmission distance by the use of optical amplifiers. Now whenever I have the attenuation and the dispersion attenuation and the dispersion is going to decrease the distance of the communication also it is going to decrease the speed dispersion is going to decrease the speed attenuation is going to decrease the distance of the communication so we have a trade off between the distance and the bandwidth right how we can increase the attenuation how we can decrease the dip dispersion so i will be having trade off in between both of them. If I increase the distance, bandwidth is going to decrease. If I increase the bandwidth, distance is going to decrease. And EDF, as I already told you, optical amplifiers are going to increase the transmission distance. So EDFA is used here instead of repeaters because the repeaters are costly. And we can simply use the erbium doped fiber amplifier. So now here if I have 100 Gbps, so at the 100 Gbps, I can transmit this signal up to only 500 meter only. So if I am increasing the speed, so speed is related to the bandwidth. So I have to decrease the distance. So distance would be only 500 meter, right? At 100 Gbps speed, right? So you can see the 100 Gbps network that you are using daily can travel up to 500 meter only with DWDM, right? What is the principle it is using? It is using the principle of division of light between the different wavelength. So how I can divide the light with the help of the multiplexer? So we are dividing the light in such a way that we are having the certain band in the operating window only. In the 1550 band only we are getting the wavelength, right? So what are the components required? For the transmitter, I require lasers because lasers can operate on a particular wavelength. Now here I want to add one more thing that the lasers can be transmitting the signal over a particular wavelength. But the specificity of the laser is not of a high concern but the sensitivity of the receiver is of very high concern because the laser can send the signal in a wide range of wavelength but the receiver has to detect only the particular wavelength that it has sent over a lot of wavelengths. So if I have various wavelengths mix receiver has to detect only this wavelength so I require a highly sensitive receiver rather than that as I already showed in the structure we have EDFA, we have OADM, we have MUX and we have DMUX. So now what are the different types of the DWDM? It depends upon what kind of network topology I have used. We can use the mesh topology, the star or the ring topology. 
right? And then we can have two types of DWDM. First is a single hop in which I am working upon the same wavelength from the transmitter to the receiver. I am not changing the wavelength of the signal from the transmitter to the receiver. So here I will be having only single hop. In the multiple hop, I will be having a device in between the transmitter to the receiver. So transmitter will be sending this signal over the wavelength lambda 1 to this device and this hop. This device is called hop. Hop is going to convert this wavelength into lambda 2 so that it will reach to the receiver. So in the multiple hop we have the some hop in between the transmitters and the receiver and they are going to send the signal over different wavelength from the transmitter to the receiver. So now what are the limitations? So for practical realization I need to have the channels which are really close. I need to have the device which are able to detect the precise wavelength, right? So I require precise wavelength selective devices. As I told you, we require a highly sensitive receiver. So this becomes costly, right? Using a receiver which is very sensitive becomes really costly. So this is the first limitation and then we require the optical amplifiers. So optical amplifiers are imperative to provide the long transmission distance. We have to use the repeaters for long transmission distance. Here I showed you that we are not using repeaters. So it is not used for very long distance communication. So what are the advantages? As I already told you, we have higher channel capacity. So we have higher bandwidth capacity as well. So we can transmit the large information simultaneously. We can use a lot of transmitters to send the signals. The different signals from the different transmitters can be sent simultaneously over the same channel to the different receiver. So I can send the large information simultaneously and it is going to handle large data rate. As I told you, it is going to handle 100 Gbps data rate as well. So it is very beneficial for high speed communication. Then it is going to send the different signal data formats. As I told you, it is going to send the analog as well as digital signal format. So it is going to send a lot of type of signals without getting affected by the format of the signals. So I hope you understood each one of the things that I have discussed in DWDM. So if you have any doubt, you can put the doubt in the comment and I will be trying to resolve your doubt as soon as possible. I hope you like this session. If you like it, please push the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with your friends and also give me your feedback. Thank you so much.